Rashmish and uh, okay, it's already in the next slide. Uh, okay, so this is the uh, t title of the uh, uh, talk that I'm going to talk about today. It's the it's basically a project that I worked on uh, last summer in uh, as a part of Google Summer of Code. So. Uh, so I, I'm Tamish and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm an active open source uh, uh, contributor to Drupal Core and uh, I'm also an, an organizer at uh, NZAC Mentor of Code, uh, a different version of uh, Google Summer of Code that we uh, organize at, in our college and uh, I'm, I'm a developer at GSOC and also a mentor in GCI and I'm, a, I'm a, a, an undergraduate sophomore year student. So yeah, the, this is my email ID if you want to reach out to me sometime. <coughs> so yeah, the... Uh, like I told you, the project that I'm, I, I, I worked on, this, this project was a part of Google Summer of Code that I worked for Drupal. Uh, yeah, so let's talk about what Drupal is for, at first. So Drupal is a content management system. So what is a content management system? Basically, if you if, if you ever need a need a website up and running and you uh, and you don't want to write any code, so what do you do? You just uh, install something that's called a content management system, and you just install it and you'll by, by a few clicks you'll have a website up and running without writing any code so that's what a cms is basically drupal is one of the most popular cms's out there in the market and uh, and yeah so one of the one of the things that i lo love about drupal is the huge community that we have it, it is uh, of over more than a million people and yeah it feels great to be a part of that uh, amazing community <coughs> So yes, who uses Drupal? Most of the uh, government government websites in uh, USA use Drupal, Twitter, NASA, and a lot of people. And 2.3 percent of the World Wide Web, basically. <coughs> so yeah, uh, coming to the topic, the part of uh, the topic of the project, uh, the top of the talk, uh, away from the uh, away, away from Drupal. Basically, uh, just to give a quick introduction about cryptography is because some if some might might not know what cryptography is. So basically cryptography and uh, encryption used to be synonymous uh, terms in a pre-modern era but currently cryptography is basically you're just taking some text and converting into an, uh, some gibberish text. That's that's cryptography using some uh, complex mathematical uh, irre irreversible or reversible functions. So um, and what encryption is, encryption is basically the process by which you're converting uh, sensible data into, in, into this kind of uh, gibberish text. So, yeah. Um, okay, so this is how encryption happens. Uh, you take some text that makes sense. You take a key and you put it into an encrypting function, and uh, th that that mathematical that performs some mathematical functions like uh, using ellipses. Like th that is a part of ECC, which is elliptical curve cryptography, uh, and a, a lot more other uh, other things that that uh, other algorithms that. Uh, go behind the scenes over there. So yeah, uh, an encrypting, um, encrypting function takes uh, some sensible data, a key, and several other parameters, and then uh, turns it into some gibberish text that you cannot uh, understand what it means. So <coughs> once you have encrypted your data, you have some random text. And in decrypting, you take that random text, you take the key, uh, another key, let's call this key two for instance, and you convert it into a text that makes sense. So uh, there are two kinds of encryptions: uh, symmetric encryption and, and asymmetric encryption. So in symmetric encryption, both of the keys that uh, that are used for uh, encrypting, uh, encrypting and decrypting are the same. And in uh, asymmetric crypto, uh, both of them are different. So one of them is called a private key, and the other one is called a public key. The public key can be uh, put out in public, and it, it can be just put up in some server or some place. You can just keep it up uh, up there. Uh, so anybody who wants to uh, send you encrypted data needs will uh, take the data, encrypt it with encrypted with your public key that is out there on your servers and then uh, and then at, at a later point in time send, send it to you when you receive the data only you will have the uh, private key and uh, you can take the private key and decrypt the data and you can, you'll get you'll get what the uh, user intended to send you so that is the asymmetric cryptography so basically these are the two things that uh, that that uh, will be used in the architecture of the uh, m module to to uh, like fit fit in as puzzles to actually make sense of the uh, whole module. So, yes, these are different uh, different uh, so, uh, standards in cryptography. That that is actually a meme. Uh, I don't know how many of you would get that, but that's all right. We get it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, these are many uh, standards in cryptography. <coughs> uh, okay. So uh, there are a lot of. Uh, 
uh, encryption standards already out there uh, and uh, almost all of the uh, applications that we use daily use some of the other kinds of encryption so uh, like but, but there are a lot of drawbacks of those or maybe they're not properly as, as well in, uh, implemented as they should be like there, there is no kind of a uh, Crypto, crypto, uh, and there's no kind of an application currently out there which I mean uh, non-zero knowledge which does cannot read your data on the server side. So, uh, yeah. So in, in the in the uh, in the present architecture, what happens is the encryption happens on the server, and uh, this way you need to trust the uh, trust the owner of the uh, owner of the server. So basically, if you're uploading some uh, data to X Y Z company, and you need you need to trust them that they won't use, misuse the my data, but uh, but at times it turns out that they do. Like recent leaks and all, you know, you might have heard about what happened with Facebook. So yeah, um, and backdoors for some like there are they at times some companies they leave out uh, backdoors in their uh, in their software so that some organizations can ac can access the data uh, secret secretly and they are basically spying on you. So uh, yeah, like some organizations which I shouldn't name, but yeah. Uh, possibly, possibility of data leak. That's it. <clears throat> okay, so what is a zero knowledge architecture basically? Uh, so, Wikipedia says a zero zero knowledge proof is is, is somewhere like Wikipedia says that th that is what the uh, definition of a zero knowledge proof is like. But over here, what I'm what I'm using for uh, a, a zero no a zero knowledge thing is basically somewhere where the server would have no idea or no knowledge of what the data on the server actually is. Okay, so uh, th that was the GSOC project, and that this is so the GSOC project is based on this idea of a zero zero knowledge or no knowledge system, and um, so so the the basic objectives of the module was was essentially to uh, so that the file data cannot be accessible by an anybody outside the internet group, be it the server administrator or anybody who has physical access to the actual uh, uh, server. Yeah, these the data remains. Encrypted. Uh, the, the data is basically encrypted on the client side, and it uh, it remains encrypted while in transit and at rest. Uh, yeah. So, in the architect to explain the architecture of this uh, module uh, or the uh, the yeah, I'll have to basically run you through a few uh, key, uh, keys that I'm I'm using and, and a few terms. Uh, so this goes along with the uh, with the architecture that own cloud is also using on their uh, on their servers for zero knowledge systems and uh, a zero knowledge uh, pr protocol uh, but over here so yeah basically uh, one thing that we will have is a group key so uh, the files that are being uh, that are being shared are, are to be shared only among uh, among that group so nobody outside that group should be able to share, see the uh, decrypt the data so uh, we are calling we are making a randomly generated group key that uh, that is generated at, at the time of uh, at, at the time of the creation of the group or when the when the uh, when module is installed so basically this is called a group key this i'm calling this a group key and uh, it, it will never be stored as clear text on the on the server uh, yeah, and, and it is stored as access keys for every individual user, uh, and and at, at the time of uh, the user logging in the, for the first time after they after the module is installed, uh, we generate a, a public and private key pair. This public private key pair is uh, stored. Uh, the the public uh, the public key is stored on the server and the private key is stored locally uh, and there are there are many ways to store it but currently I'm using uh, H, uh, the HTML5 API that uh, stores the local local storage API that stores the data in the browser so basically that that is where the private key is being stored and um, and access keys okay access keys okay so what was it what is an access key an access key is the en encrypted uh, group key for every user so every user would would have uh, one group, one access key per group that they are in. Okay, so uh, yeah, <coughs> that's that's about it. And the key generation, basically, when when which key gets generated, uh, the public and private key gets generated every time the for, for the first time they log in. And uh, group key is the uh, key assigned to a group, and access keys are for every user. Uh, so yeah, this this is how the encryption happens in in this uh, architecture. Basically, uh, the uh, the 
when a browser when a user wants to encrypt some data the uh, browser requests for the for the that user's access keys using a rest api and it it fetches the key and uh, then it also fetches the uh, private key from the browser and it uses these two keys to generate i mean decrypt de 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 the uh, access key using the private key to uh, get the group key and it uses this group key to uh, decrypt the actual data that he wants to see so that is how the de decryption happens and in the encryption uh, in, in, sorry that is how the decryption happens encryption happens and this is and the decryption happens by uh, fetching the key using the same mechanism but at the end it's just decrypting the data with that same group key so th that is that is aes encryption so at the end i mean this is a metric one that i'm using <coughs> Okay, so that th that was basic uh, basic en encryption and decryption. How how the encryption happens and how the decryption happens in the module. But this module goes way, way beyond that because there are a lot of edge cases and a lot of uh, cases where you don't know what what would happen. I mean, what if a user is uh, user is not there already, and uh, what if it, the module is already there and a new user has added to group and those things. And yeah, some ba basic behaviors. <coughs> uh, Yes, so uh, as I said before, that I was using lo local storage, HTML5 local storage for this uh, for the for the module. Uh, many people have told me that yeah, it's uh, local storage is volatile storage. If you clear the data of the browser, uh, the, the the key would go away. So, but what, what how how did I solve this? I, I so basically when, when the key gen get generates, uh, you you get it copy of the private key or downloaded to your browser downloaded to your local computer and uh, once that, that is downloaded you and at at, a, at some, any point in time in future if your computer gets uh, maybe it damages or something like that you move on to a new computer you using a new browser you have an interface that uh, on which you can uh, restore the keys basically uh, and yeah what happens when a new user okay so the complete architecture is uh, architecture is set up and all the keys are in place and everything is there so uh, what will happen if if I'm, I'm adding a new user to a group uh, the admin adds a new user to the group so basically uh, when a new user is added to a group the first of all when they log in for the first time they will get they will get a, a private and public key that, so they have those keys in place now uh, now when the admin adds adds him to the adds him or her to the uh, uh, group th there's this thing called as the pending keys table so th that user gets added to the pending keys table and uh, and there's a request for a key okay i need this i need need this key if somebody is online please give me a, please give me a key so when a new user when another user comes online who is already uh, who already has the key for that group he uh, decrypts and and fetches the uh, group key for that module and uh, sees that that okay this guy needs the key for that that group he uh, fetches his public key from that table and encrypts encrypts that uh, his own uh, group key and sends it sends it back to him so he now has a key so he can access the data now all right so what happens when a user is deleted when a user is deleted uh, uh, there's this hook there's a there's a hook that is called uh, and the user's keys are removed from the from the uh, table and pos and it it isn't currently done but it should should happen that the uh, all the keys should be regenerated because what what if the user uh, what if the deleted user has a copy of his keys but this is not currently worked upon that much <coughs> so yeah uh, this is basically the all, all the dependencies that uh, i mean when i started started off with this project there were i, I uh, my mentor gave me a list, uh, this uh, told me about web, web cryptography api uh, that is by uh, that is a recommendation by w3c uh, so i looked it up and uh, and it it turned out that the uh, the functions that i needed uh, for for my project were not that stable and it weren't working properly back then so after after that i i explored more and found a few more libraries uh, okay but they were also based on uh, th this api so but they t turned out to work somehow and uh, yeah so i am I, I was actually using the javascript uh, sjcl that is stand for javascript crypto, crypto library it's good for e elliptic curve cryptography and aes but it does not support rsa uh, so for for rs i i'm not supporting ecc yet i'm on R rsa so uh, yeah for rsa i needed to add a dependency for js encrypt uh, so i'm using that and uh, yeah so there are there are a few trade offs when we are using for going for this kind of an architecture uh, so so because all this stuff is happening on the browser on the client side and the browser is not the an ideal place to do a lot of processing so it is way way 
more slower than it would happen on a server ideally and it and you cannot put a lot of load on it because uh, it might crash if you're use, if you're having a having like very large files and yeah the volatile key storage that i talked about uh, if you want more details on the on the on the architecture and um, the progress and everything like that there's these links uh, there's these links and the slides links are over here you can access those from there and yeah so this is a demo of how it works but uh, that's just a basic few clicks and a uh, few like do you want to see it at the demo okay um I'm not sure if I have internet. <laughs> no, I think I have. So this is basically a user logging in. Um, it, this generates a new key pair, private key pair, private public key pair. This is the private key that gets downloaded, and then um, what is this? Okay, he logs out and logs in. Logs in using uh, a, a user that. Already has a key. Um, okay. Now I'm going to uh, post some some content to a group, uh, and I only and I want that uh, file to only be uh, read by the users of that group. So. Uh, So the file it's, is it's encrypted and uploaded, and now I can I, I access the file over here. But if I log out, um, okay, it's still there, and I can access it the file. And now I'm logging out. Okay, come on. Okay, now I've logged out, and uh, it's the same URL, so the file is on there. And yeah, that's it. Okay, so that's it. Thank you.